So last video, we talked about the types of um, ganglionic nerves. So let's look at this again. We have the preganglionic neuron and the postganglionic neuron. And we talked about how the brain sends the signal via the preganglionic neuron first, pre because it's first, and then the neurotransmitters or dots get sent to the receptor or this thing over here, it binds to it, it attaches to it, and when it attaches, then the signal goes forward, it passes through the postganglionic neuron, and then again, more neurotransmitters are released, and then it attaches to um, another receptor, and when that happens, the arm can move, right? And the already hand can go up and give you the glass of water. So this is the process that happens. Now, when you look at the preganglionic neuron, sometimes the neuron is short, sometimes it's super long, and I'll show you a picture of that. And same thing with postganglionic. Sometimes the neuron is short, and sometimes it's really long. So let's look at the next picture over here. Whenever we're looking at the sympathetic nervous system, so when you're really scared, for example, you, you'll notice that the first um, preganglionic neuron is short and the postganglionic neuron is long. So sympathetic nervous system, when you're scared, you would have a short preganglionic neuron and a long postganglionic neuron. So if you're scared, what's going to happen is your eyes are going to get big. Your eyes are going to dilate. And for that to happen, the central nervous system, so the brain and the spinal cord, sends a signal to tell the eye to get bigger. And how does it do that? Well, the signal has to be passed through the preganglionic neuron, which is short, and then the postganglionic neuron, which is long. So see how it's a long fiber? Let's compare that with the parasympathetic nervous system. So when you are relaxed or in a resting state, what happens is the brain will tell the, let's look at the saliva this time. The brain will send a signal through the preganglionic neuron. So the first neuron is a preganglionic neuron. And it tells the gland, the parotid gland, for example, to release saliva. What I want you to note, and it may not be that clear over here, is, is that um, the preganglionic neuron is long. And the postganglionic neuron, which is over here, is short. Let's look at a different example here. Let's say um, you're resting. What happens to your heart? Your heart slows down, right? When you're scared, your heart pumps up. But when you're resting, your heart is slow. You're, and for that to happen, when the brain detects that you're resting, it sends a signal through the preganglionic neuron first, so the blue one over here, which is short, and then, or sorry, which is long, I'm sorry, which is long. And then it goes to the post-ganglionic um, neuron, which is short. So in the parasympathetic nervous system, so when you're resting, the preganglionic neuron is long, the postganglionic neuron is short. So that's the opposite. Okay, and again, when you look at that, when you look at the sympathetic nervous system, you'll see that the first one, the pre ganglionic is short, the post-ganglionic is long. When you look at the opposite, so when you're resting the parasympathetic nervous system, you'll notice that the pre-ganglionic is long, post-ganglionic neuron is short. And again, this is just to recap that when you do, you have the uh, parasympathetic nervous system, you're relaxed, you're breathing nicely. You can meditate. You're, you're visibly relaxed. But when you have the sympathetic nervous system and you're in a fight or flight mode, then, you know, your muscles tense up. You've got high blood pressure. You could get depressed. You're anxious. You're irritable, right? Like so many different symptoms can happen. So we were talking about neurotransmitters earlier where we said that when the brain receives a signal, it goes through the preganglionic fibers. Then in the middle, in the synapse, which is the middle, this is where the neurotransmitters, so those blue dots, get released. 
and it binds to the receptor here. And when it binds to this receptor here, the signal keeps going, okay? And it releases some more neurotransmitters, and then it goes to the target organ. So maybe it goes to your hand, and your hand can um, go up and give you the, the, or lift up the glass so that you can drink the water. What we're looking at is neurotransmitters, those dots. So those dots that you see that are in the middle, that are in the synapse, are called neurotransmitters. And the neurotransmitters that we typically see are the um, ACH neurotransmitters. It's also known as the acetylcholine trans, um, neurotransmitters, and it's written as capital A, capital C, lowercase h. Okay, so again, this is a neuron is a presynaptic neuron. That's another word for it. The neurotransmitters come out from these, um, the presynaptic neuron. And you can see those dots. These dots are the same as these blue dots. And they bind to a receptor in the postsynaptic neuron. So they bind to this, which is shown over here. And once it binds, the signals can carry forward and then create the action that needs to be done. So lifting up the arm or lifting up the hand. So the neurotransmitters, or those dots, the ones that we're concerned about is called acetylcholine. That's the ACH. So again, we have the brain. It's sending a signal to the um, synapse, right? It's sending a signal, and the neurotransmitters here are being released, and the neurotransmitter here is called the ACH, or the acetylcholine. Okay, this is also known as ACH. And then it sends a signal to the short uh, nerve, and then it goes on, and then it tells the heart to start um, slowing down, for example. So when you relax, the heart slows down. Another word for the um, acetylcholine neurotransmitter is sometimes um, people will say it's cholinergic. And cholinergic is just another way of referring to the parasympathetic nervous system or another way of um, referring to the neurotransmitters in this area over here, referring to the dots in this area over here. So if someone says that they're using a drug from the cholinergic family or the cholinergic uh, drug class, it means that they're using a drug to calm them down, to make them in a resting uh, phase, to make the heart slow down, for example. When someone is in a sympathetic nervous um, system, what then happens is we still have neurotransmitters being released in the middle. So again, the signal goes through this preganglionic nerve, it hits the middle, which is the synapse, and what neurotransmitters are released? The same ones, mm -hmm. the acetylcholine neurotransmitters are released. So that's released, it goes in this area over here, pumps out, binds to the receptor over here. When it binds, the signal goes through the long postganglionic nerve, so it passes through here. We get more um, neurotransmitters over here, and then it tells the heart to start pumping faster. For example, if you're scared or if you're running, you're pumping faster. Notice over here that when it's the parasympathetic nervous system, the first nerve the first preganglionic nerve is long, right? That's why it says long over here. The second one, the second postganglionic nerve is short. Compared to the sympathetic nervous system, the first preganglionic nerve is short. The second preganglionic nerve is long. Okay, so it goes through a process to get the heart to start pumping faster. Where it goes, the signal has to grow through all this. Neurotransmitters have to be released in this area and in this area for the heart to start pumping slower, for example, in her case. So how does cholinergic agents or cholinergic drugs work? How does drug work when we wanna make someone um, have symptoms in their body that will make them relax? So there are two ways. There's direct acting and indirect acting. And what direct acting is, is that the drug, so C is basically the drug, okay, the cholinergic drug, the drug binds to the receptor. Now, what does that mean? Typically, what we want 
is the ACH, the acetylcholine, to bind to the receptor. Because when it binds to the receptor, that's when we'll start relaxing. That's when we'll start being like her. Our heart rate will slow down. We'll get more saliva. We, um, our digestive system will start to work, right? So lots of symptoms are happening. Lots of things are happening to her body. If we use a cholinergic agent where we take this drug, so she takes this drug, for example, and she takes this drug, what happens is the drug binds to the receptors over here. And when it binds to the receptors over here, so the C is the drug, what could happen is that we could get more saliva coming out. So if she has saliva, but we want more saliva. We want more saliva, we're going to take this drug and we're going to get more saliva. We're going to start feeling even more better. And in order to feel more better, our saliva will start producing even more. So we could take a drug called pilocarpine. And if we take this drug, what happens is this drug will bind to the receptor. So this is the preganglionic nerve. So it's right over here. This over here is the postganglionic nerve, which is right over here. Typically, the ACH binds to the receptor, but in this case, when we take this drug, which is the, pilo, uh, the pilocarpine, sorry, when we take pilocarpine, the pilocarpine will attach to the receptor instead of the ACH neurotransmitters. And when this attaches, we're going to get more saliva. And that's one way, that's direct acting when the drug directly acts on the receptor. Indirect acting is basically when the drug. So when you take the drug and what happens is the drug prevents an enzyme from being released. So typically, we'll go back over here. Typically, when you want the heart to start uh, relaxing, for example, or to start to slow down, in her case, we want the heart to start to slow down, the brain will send a signal here, release neurotransmitters, release dots. The dots will bind to the receptor here. It will travel. The signal will travel over here. And then we'll get more neurotransmitters being released, more ACH neurotransmitters or dots being released, and that will bind to a receptor that will tell the heart to slow down. What happens is eventually the ACH will stop getting released. Eventually the neurotransmitters will stop being released. How? How does the neurotransmitters, how do the dots stop being released? Well, an enzyme is released in the body, and that enzyme is called ACHE, which is right here. It's called acetylcholinesterase, okay, ACHE. So if you're using a cholinergic agent, a cholinergic drug, if you're taking a medication, one way that, or one thing that a medication could do is it could stop the enzyme, it could stop the ACHE from being uh, released. And what does the ACHE do? When the ACHE is released, all the neurotransmitters here goes away. It disappears. It doesn't bind anymore. So the signal can't be sent. So again, this enzyme, the ACHE, it's basically, it gets in this area, it gets in here, and it kicks away, takes away all the ACH. So it tells all the ACH to go back home. It tells all the ACH to go back. Or it, tell, it, it, it you know, kicks it out. It, it makes it disappear. And when it makes it disappear, nothing can bind to the receptor site. Okay, so here we don't see a lot of ACH. We just see four. Typically, we would see a lot more ACH. And the reason why we don't see it is because this enzyme has been produced and it kicks it out. It takes it out. So when we take this drug, what happens is it prevents all the uh, enzymes from coming out. And when it prevents it, what happens is we can allow more ACH to come out, more ACH can come and bind and let the process, let the signal go through. So let's put it all together. Let's just say that I want um, more saliva, okay? My mouth is very dry. And um, I, went, I go to the doctor, I go to the dentist, and I complain, and the dentist or doctor prescribes pilocarpine. Well, one way that I could get more saliva in my mouth is that um, the drug will bind to the receptor here, 
and when the drug binds to the receptor here, the signal will keep flowing and I'll get more saliva. Another way is that the drug can um, inhibit the um, ACHE. So what that means is that the drug would get rid of all these ACHE here. And the reason why it wants to get rid of it is so that these ACH over here can keep going down. So we want them all to go down. Okay? We want them all to go down. And when all this goes down, we continue to get more, we continue to get more saliva. Okay, so there's direct acting where the drug basically binds to the receptor. There's indirect acting where the enzymes are told to go away so that the ACH can continue getting released. And when the ACH continues to get released, we get more and more saliva in our mouth.